Last lesson, we looked, at, we looked at Newton's first law, and we're going to be looking at the second law now. And you guys know it. You may have heard it before. It's a pretty famous equation, F equals MA. All right, it's nearly as famous as E equals MC squared by Einstein. But F equals MA came from Isaac Newton. And you know it all the time. You experience it all the time. I mean, let's just think of some common examples. So if I got this ball here, and I was to throw this ball, Brad, get ready, throw this ball, I throw it with a certain amount of force. And when I throw it with a certain amount of force, it has a certain acceleration. <laughs> but if I wanted to make it go faster, if I wanted to make it accelerate faster, I have to apply more force. Right? So if I want to throw this towards the back of the room, let's say, because right, I'm going to throw it fast, right? Then I, then I need to go further, so I have to apply more force. If I apply more force, the acceleration goes up. And it doesn't matter my hand. Here we go, ready? Daniel, go. Oh, okay. And throw it back. Oh, beautiful. So it's pretty straightforward that as I increase the force, I increase the acceleration because the mass of the object, the mass of this ball has not changed. So when that happens, we say that it's directly proportional. As one goes up, the other one goes up. Right? So as force increases, acceleration increases. So that's what the first thing means. This little symbol here that looks like a fish swimming is a proportion symbol. Force is proportional to acceleration. Right? So you might want to write that down in your books, right? The little squiggle here means proportion. So force is proportional to acceleration. The more force, the more acceleration. The less force, the less acceleration. It's directly proportional. But what about if I was to increase the mass? So here I now have a bowling ball. So if I want to project this bowling ball, don't worry Brad, I'm not going to throw it here. If I was to try and throw this bowling ball with the same acceleration I had with the styrofoam ball, or not styrofoam, the foam ball. So if I was to try and throw this to match it and have the same acceleration, I have to apply more force, right? I need more force to make it have the same acceleration because the mass is bigger. So I'm showing you that as the mass increases, the amount of force that I need to apply to the ball to make it move increases as well. Does that make sense? Once again, it's a directly proportional relationship. Yeah. Uh, can you repeat what that little squiggle means? Yeah, proportion. Proportion. So force is proportional to mass. Right? Force is proportional to mass. The heavier I make it, the more force I've got to use to make it propel across the room with the same acceleration that we had before. Now, what about the last one here? Mass is proportional to one over acceleration. What does that mean? Well, let me just go back to this formula here because this will make a bit more sense. If I keep the force the same, right? If I keep the force the same, so I've now got my ball again and I want to throw this with the same amount of force. Let's say I'm really good at throwing and I can guarantee that when I apply that same amount of force when I throw, it doesn't change. We could make it more accurate by me getting, let's say, an elastic band. And I could put this elastic band like a slingshot and I could pull the elastic band back to here and let go. It's going to go a certain distance. If I was to get the heavier ball now, if I was to change its mass and I was to pull this in the elastic band the same distance, which one of the two balls would have the fastest acceleration? Yep. The one with the less mass. Right? So when I keep... When I keep the force the same, so the force is the same, as the mass decreases, the acceleration increases. It's an opposite relationship, right? Opposite relationship. If I increase the mass and I keep the force the same, then this will only be projected a small distance. It'll have a small acceleration. And you guys know that. You've experienced that before in everyday life, right? You get a golf club and you've got a little ping pong ball there. If you do the same swing, and apply the same force to that ping pong ball, it's very light, it's gonna be accelerating off the tee really fast. However, if I put the bowling ball there on the tee, and I try and use the same force to hit it, it will not accelerate very fast, because as the mass goes up, the acceleration goes down. And that's called an inverse relationship. It's an inverse relationship, and that's what we're looking at today. Right. So this is what we're doing today. We're seeing how does the acceleration of a car change when its mass changes. So we've got two, two setups here. We've got a car 
we've got a pulley and we've got a mass, a slotted mass, right? And that slotted mass is being pulled down by the, pull of gra by the force of gravity, okay? By the force of gravity. Now, to work out the amount of force, and we're going to learn this a bit later in the course, but to work out the amount of force, it's just it's mass times gravity, 9.8, the pull of gravity. So whatever the mass is on your, on your slotted mass, you need to times that by 9.8. That's going to give you a figure in newtons because force is measured in newtons, right? Let's just make it up for the moment. Let's say that you've got um, 100 grams there. So 100 times 9.8 is 980 newtons. So you've got 980 newtons going down. That's going to be the same amount of force on this string here. So whatever the going down, it's going to be the same pulling it across. So 980 newtons of force is going to be pulling your cart. So we're keeping force the same. Okay? And we predict that when we keep force the same, as we increase the mass, the acceleration should? Decrease. decrease. Exactly, right? So when we have our cart here, you need to measure the mass of a cart. So I'll have some electronic balances and you measure how heavy the cart is. But then what you do is you pull it back, you turn on your ticker tape, because we've got to measure the acceleration, we've done that in the previous prac. So you turn on the ticker tape, you let it go and it moves forward at a certain acceleration and leaves little dots on the ticker tape. You take that ticker tape off and you write on it, empty cart. Okay, so you know that's with no additional mass. Then you set it up again and you put your first mass on. And then you let it go again, and you get a second strip, and you will write down how much mass you put on the cart. So let's say you put 500 grams on, then you put 500 grams there. You then label that um, cart with 500 grams. Then you get your third strip, you set it up, and then you do it again, and it's gonna have the maximum amount of weight. Let's say it has 1.5 kilos on it, and then it's gonna, produce a strip with an acceleration with the dots when you have the heaviest mass. And so you're changing the mass and measuring the acceleration. So what would be the independent variable then? What's the independent variable in this experiment? The one that we are changing, yeah. The mass, the mass is the independent variable. And the variable that we are measuring, the dependent variable, what's that? What are we measuring here? Yeah. Well, we're, that's constant. That's constant. So something we're measuring on the strip. Well, the force is constant. We're measuring the little dots and taking them off and we're going to measure something. Speed. We're measuring the acceleration. The acceleration, because the acceleration is a change in speed. So you will measure the speed, what it begins with and what it finishes with. And of course, the difference between those two will be its acceleration. So we're measuring the acceleration. It's the dependent variable. We're changing the mass, which is the independent variable, and we're keeping the same force here. If I was to ask you what were the controlled variables in this experiment, what do we keep the same? What are some of the things we're keeping the same here? Yeah. The same cart. The same cart, exactly. What else are we keeping the same? Same weight. The same weights that we're using. What else are we keeping the same, yeah? Uh, the same pulley system. The same pulley system. And we're assuming we're assuming that that pulley system doesn't add friction. It's an ideal pulley. Yes? Same surface. Same surface, right? One person's doing it on a bench, another person's not doing it on cement. It's the same surface. Yep, last one. The same length of string. The same length of string. So in other words, the same distance over which it's moving. Okay? Here is a more sophisticated setup that you use in year 11, right? Because here we have a digital, a digital cart and we have a piece of string, we have the pulley at the end, and then we have the slotted mass down there. It's exactly the same as what you guys are doing, but this has got sensors in it. So it will measure the acceleration, and so I can connect this to my computer, and then when I turn it on and it moves, it will give me a value of acceleration. Not only that, because it's measuring the acceleration, let's say it's measuring it 50 times a second, I can actually get it to graph for me as it's doing it, which is pretty cool. So I can see whether the acceleration is um, changing, staying the same, how much it's changing by, etc. Whereas you're going to do a graph, but you're going to have to get your raw data and plot it out. Okay, so that's the experiment we're going to be doing. 
All right, I'm gonna show you the equipment specifically you guys are doing and then you're gonna get up and do it, which we've only got around about 15 minutes to do maximum, okay? All right, 